All right, guys. We're here at RB Reptiles doing some cleaning. And uh, Ben, he's been kind of trying to like practice singing. I know, weird, right? Anyway, <laughs> it's pretty funny. And I think I hear him over in the other room. So we're going to try to sneak up on him. All right. Oh, let's see what we can do here. We're going to take a little walk. You could be better off than you are. Ooh. Or would you rather be a mule? A mule is an animal with long funny ears. Picks up at anything he hears. His back is brawny and his brain is weak. He's just plain stupid with a stubborn streak. But by the way, if you hate to go to school, so, uh, <clears throat> you may grow up to be a mule. What's going on? Nothing. What's going on with you? Nothing, man. Just hanging out. Honkers here. What's up, guys? We have a couple tips here for you guys, and we want to help you guys out in your snake rooms. And maybe even if you have a few snakes compared to having a lot of snakes, um, these little tips we started when we were uh, just starting out and we got these from other breeders and uh, a couple ideas on our own. And they help us out, they speed things up. And so when you're doing your snakes and you're like, hey, I have like one or two snakes and you use ceramic bowls, let's say for example, cleaning a bowl only takes a, you know, a minute. That's not so bad, but when you have 50, 100, 200 snakes, sometimes that starts to get really out of control in timing wise and it's hard to go through all of your animals and you don't want to spend all of your time cleaning and changing waters and stuff like that you want to spend time handling your animals checking them out looking them over things like that rather than the cleaning and the mundane things that you have to do which is real exciting let me tell you it's not all glamour so one of the tips that we use is for our baby racks so we have baby hatchling racks here it's a small tub here and instead of putting a ceramic bowl inside we'll use deli cups and that way you can take them out dump them out and toss them or recycle them if you like to and how do you hold them up so what we did was we went to home depot lowe's something like that and we found little couplings so these are actually a, a great drain they're really awesome this manufacturer stopped making these we bought a bunch but we needed more so what we also got if you can't find those great train covers. Um, there's these little two inch couplings and they sell these at most uh, hardware stores and they'll have, they don't fit perfect, perfect, but a two ounce deli cup fits in there pretty well and the snakes won't tip them over. Um, they work really well for babies and they're very fast to change in and out. So that's one tip that's very good for us. The other one is when you upgrade to adult bins, we got these um, four inch couplings. It's a PVC coupling. And you'll see some of them are slightly different than others, but they're all really close. And we get a 16 ounce deli cup and they fit right in. So you can pull them out, dump them, recycle them, and just get new ones, pop them in and fill them. Um, you can fill them before you pop them in, but these won't flip. They're not terribly expensive and they go really quick so instead of hand washing everything you go through these and if you're changing them you know once a week or twice a week it may seem like a lot of money at first but it's really not when you start buying cases of deli cups um, so you make the investment up front and then it's not so bad after that another thing that we also did was we ran a hose so we're not in some big warehouse we're in a, a small snake room and we first ran a garden hose and that, you know, you just hook a garden hose to a sink and uh, it kind of smelled and tasted like rubber or plastic. And so that wasn't really working for us. We didn't think it'd be the greatest thing for our animals. So, and I'm not saying that if you're doing it, that it's wrong. It's just something that we were a little concerned with. So what uh, I did was I went out and I got the hookup for, um, for a dishwasher actually. So this is the dishwasher hose. Um, they use these for 
uh, for a sink for one of these guys. And we hook it up to a, 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 a um, utility sink and we run the hose and this little spot here and it shoots water. So it's really clean. Ryan picked the head because the head that I was using was leaking a tiny bit. So it may take a couple iterations, but um, it's clean. It's human water safe. Like this is what we would drink out of. And um, like, ah, tastes fine. So um, we think if it's good enough for us, it's good enough for the animals. So that's also another quick tip. If you can't run crazy amounts of plumbing into your room, uh, just running a hose that is safe for human consumption, I think is just fine. Another thing that we do is we started using newspaper when we first started. That can get uh, a little bit of ink on the bottom of our animals. It doesn't hurt them and it's not bad, but uh, we just wanted something a little bit more professional and also it was a pain kind of to be pulling out newspapers and stuffing them into the bins. So we went out and we bought a 15 inch roll of craft paper. It's fairly absorbent. Um, we use multiple layers when we do it and uh, that's only usually if there's something going on with the animal or if we really need this or if there's um, an issue with it being too wet or humid. Uh, so we'll utilize this every once in a while and get spend the money for a little roller. It's so much easier and so much faster than trying to do it with like scissors or something like that. So that was a good a good win for us when we got one of those. Also, when it comes to the substrate, we use a coconut bedding. Uh, sometimes people use all different sorts of things and there's lots of things that you can use. Don't use pine unless it's baked, um, which is kind of tricky to find sometimes. But you want to make sure that your bedding is healthy for the animals. We use a coconut bedding and it is healthy. Um, so we use Pro Coco. And if you can come in here, right, you can see this is all a bunch of chunks. So for our snakes, for the animals that we have, our snakes and our skinks, um, that bedding works out really well. And so what makes it nice and quick is then you can spot clean with it. So you pull an animal out, you grab you know a little bit of stuff and you throw it away. Um, having a big tub of it is very helpful when you're doing a lot of stuff. So sometimes you might break down like one block at a time and uh, keep it in a small container or break it down and then put it into your bins. What we found to do is getting a big container like you saw here, breaking down two or three blocks. For us, two blocks of Pro Coco fit in here. And we break it down and we make sure that it's moist enough. And that's Ryan's favorite word, but make sure that it's moist enough and so there's humidity, but you don't want it to get uh, moldy in here, so you don't want it to get too moist. There's a little balance. You learn over time. But it makes it easy so that when you're working, you're doing your animals, you're spot cleaning, you can just pull out handfuls and fill your bins. And it's quick and it's easy. Um, so if you do a little bit of the light work up front when he's empty, and if you keep a couple of the tubs around, it really helps out. So those are just some of our tips. They're just tips so you can hopefully help speed up some of your service to your animals and give you a little bit more time to actually enjoy them rather than cleaning up after them, which is one of the joys of reptile breeding. All right, guys, we got a special request. It's something that we don't ever do, but uh, you know, in the heart of what did we buy? Rossi, this guy named Mike Rossi, he found us on Instagram and he messaged us and he asked us to do something for him. And we've been, you know, people have been really generous to us. And so, you know, we like crazy ideas, you know me. Um, I'm really into just about doing anything, <laughs> sort of. But, um, so, he said, I want to send you guys some money and I want to buy one of your eggs from one of your clutches. And so we discussed a couple of the clutches that we have in the incubator and um, something that had some good potential to be really cool egg, uh, eggs that hatch. <clears throat> so we came up with the Hyperion to the Enchi Inferno clutch. We had six good eggs, and we took a picture of them. We said, hey, why don't you pick it? So he picked number four. And if you can zoom in here, Ryan, or come close. So we counted it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he picked this one. Happens to be the best looking egg. I don't know if he did that on purpose, but that's OK. So I'm just going to write a quick little MR on here for Mike Rossi. Um, Really cool, fun idea. We're excited. It could be anything. 
Um, I guess the worst that it'll be is, I guess it could be a pastel, but um, the worst it could be is a pastel. Yeah, it's a super on one side. But so, it's eight right. different jeans. So a pastel is the worst that it could be because it's a super pastel on one side, but it's an Enchi Inferno on the other side, which is Enchi, Pastel, Hidden Gene Woma, and Yellow Belly. So there's a Pastel on one side, and the, hit, the Hyperion is a super, uh, super Pastel Fire Calico. And so the likelihood it's gonna be a Super Pastel is pretty high. But there's eight jeans at play here, um, so it could be anything. Fun fact, every one of the combos is a one in 128 odds of hitting. So for every 128 eggs that you have hatched with the combo, you get one. <laughs> That's crazy odds. All right. So <laughs> thank you very much. And so we'll update you guys as this goes. And um, hopefully when we're cutting this clutch, you guys will be really rooting for Mike to get something really great. And uh, we are too, because we really hope that he's excited and happy. And who knows what could happen. Could be just a pastel, possibly. But it also could be an eight gene that we would love to have. <laughs> but who knows? Can't make me laugh. Alright, so thanks guys. And Ryan's giving me a dirty look because I just threw like three greens into this, so I'm gonna throw this in the trash. Ah. I guess I could have done that. So anyway. <laughs> I'm not supposed to talk behind the camera. So anyway, um, go ahead. Hey guys. Kind of like, hey guys. You kind of look like Red Green Grumbled. No, no, no. <laughs> We're not gonna keep him in there for this. Um, good. <laughs> Put on sunglasses.